Hey everybody, it's Ben here. Today I wanna to show you how I've added some live monitoring to my solar system. And then before we're done, I also wanna show you an idea I have for integrating electric car charging with solar monitoring. So first of all, I've gotta say that I really do love my solar setup. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is I don't have a nice simple way of looking at how much power it's making right now. I do have some great software that came with my system. Uh, it lets me run reports, uh, graphs, all sorts of neat things, but it's not real time and I have to access it through a computer or a cell phone. So at a bare minimum, it means I'm typing in a username and password. And what I'd really like to do is, while well, I'm just out working in my garage anyways, um, just look and at any given moment know exactly how much power my solar is creating. Uh, in fact, that's very similar to what you get from a kilowatt. A kilowatt is a uh, great little device. You plug it into the wall, you plug any electric uh, device into it that you want, and it tells you uh, the voltage of your electric outlet, uh, how many amps and how many watts your device is using, and it can track that energy over time too. Uh, which is great for something like a refrigerator, for example, that turns on and off. So in today's project, what we're going to use is an inexpensive panel meter. And this is actually very similar to the kilowatt in that it tells you uh, potential in voltage, current in amps, um, power in watts, and energy in watt hours. So it'll give you all your key information on what the solar system is doing. Uh, this is very inexpensive. I got this uh, off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for you. On the side here, it has uh, four wire inputs. Two of them are for power, and then two of them are for this little device right here. Uh, what this is, is it's a coil, and it goes around one of the wires from the solar. Because you have to keep in mind that anytime that there is an electric current, a flow of electricity, um, it makes a small magnetic field. And basically what this device does is it picks up that magnetic field, turns that into a signal, and the stronger the current, the more the current, the stronger the magnetic field. Uh, so those are um, directly proportional to each other. So what I'll have to do is get this around one of the wires for the solar system, hook it up to here, and run in uh, two wires for power. So of course that means I'm gonna have to get into the breaker box. I also need something to mount this into, and I want it um, clean and to code and everything like that. So what I'm going to use is a four inch, just plain electric box. And then I also have a single gang cover for it. So this is the style that would have like one light switch or one electric outlet, that sort of a thing. And it has two little tabs that normally screws would go into for one of those single gang items. I don't have anything like that on here. This does have a pair of little ears though. And I think if I just grind these two tabs down just a little bit with a Dremel, then I should be able to pop this straight in here. Now I do need some power to operate this and I don't wanna tap that power off of the solar because for example, if the solar is off, this is completely off too. So I'm gonna bring it in from a different circuit and rather than um, mess around in my breaker box, adding some more wires and, and wire nuts and things, I'm just gonna add another breaker. Uh, this is just a 15 amp um, dual pole breaker, uh, very basic and expensive breaker for my panel and I already pigtailed on it um, a couple of short pieces of 14 gauge wiring. Um, that fits this, and it also fits within the range of the screws on here. So let's get into the breaker box, and of course the first thing we wanna do is kill all the power. So we'll turn off power from the solar, we'll turn off the solar breaker, we'll also turn off the main breaker. Now because this is a sub-panel, if I want it to be even extra safe, I could go in the house and turn off the breaker that feeds this panel as well. Uh, lastly, it's best to do this thing, sort of thing during the day because then um, you've got the sunlight coming in. It's a lot easier to work in a breaker panel uh, when you can see what you're doing in there. Fumbling with a flashlight's never that easy. So let's take off the, uh, the cover, uh, turn the power off and get to work. So this current sensor has to go around just one of the two current carrying wires from the solar. Now that's this 30 amp breaker up here. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect one of those wires. I'm gonna do the red one and then put this around the wire and then hook that wire back up. Now the leads on this are actually pretty short 
and I want to put the box for the display down about here. So that's going to be okay though, because that wire runs right past. So I'm going to put the current sensor on, uh, hook the wire back up and then slide the current sensor down where it'll be able to reach into this box. Then I need to put that wire back in and tighten it down. So where I want to put the display is right about here. So I'm going to pick a knockout on the side where the box is going to go. I'd like it to go right about here. Um, it's also out from the wall a little bit. So I'm going to put up a wood block just to support the back of the box and I'll have to knock out one of these knockouts on the box. So I'm going to go with the middle one on here. Got a nice hole right there. So I already knocked out one of the half inch spaces here and I put in a conduit short connector. It's kind of like a pipe nipple. So then my actual metal box here with the hole going the right direction goes on that along with one of those conduit washers and that's going to hold it in place on there. And then this whole thing is going to be supported with a wood block back behind here. So I'm just going to put that in place and then it never hurts to just make sure that everything is nice and plumb and flush. So we want to make sure this is nice and level before we mount anything down. And lastly, just locking down that nut, tapping on it with a hammer and screwdriver. So now with the box in place and connected, I'm going to take those little uh, current sensor wires, push them through, make them come out in the box. Now you're probably not going to see it well because my hands are going to get in the way, but I'm going to push the wires right through this connector right here. Now, because that panel meter needs its own power source, um, I could tie it into any of the 240 volt breakers here, but I wanted to give it its own power source just to keep it clean and simple. And I did have a nice open spot right here. So I'm adding a 15 amp 240 volt breaker. I've already got a pair of wires on here. Normally, of course, you'd pull your wires all through the system. Uh, install a breaker, put the wires into the breaker. It's just, it's a little tight. So I just put the wires on the breaker first so I can feed it through and then install the breaker. So I've got the wires through, but before installing our panel meter, I'm going to want to figure out how to install it on this trim ring, and I think that means it's time for the Dremel. Well, that took just a little bit more grinding than I thought. I took the tabs off almost completely. They're not quite as wide as the width of this, but uh, pretty close to it. Um, I also found what seemed to work the best for trimming down the metal fast was this kind of rough uh, sanding drum on the Dremel. That seemed like the best bit. So now, um, if we take a look here, uh, this pretty much pops 
right in. And we've got a nice little panel. Now it's gonna be a little bit tight for the wires over here. So I'll definitely wanna pull the wires through, wire this up and then snap it together. So if we look at the schematic on here, these top two screws are for the small wires for the current sensor. And the bottom two are for the wires going to power in case, this case, these uh, 14 gauge wires going to our 15 amp circuit breaker. So I will wire those up now. Okay, I got all four wires in there. Um, it's just a little goofy because those wires are so darn short, but they will all fit inside. Now probably one last thing to do before putting it all back together and turning power on. Make sure it's installed the right way up. And then the last thing to do before putting the cover back on is remember that uh, because I added that 15 amp uh, dual pole breaker right there, I'll need to make room for it, which I've already done. Uh, any of these little metal pieces are pretty easy to pull out by wiggling them with uh, just nice big pliers, grab them, wiggle them back and forth until they snap out. So now this can go back on. So now we can turn the power back on, starting with the main breaker. Hey, I get my lights back in here, that's nice. Uh, I'll turn on the breaker for our display. And right now it's showing no power. It is showing 238 volts because uh, that's kind of our system voltage because it's connected to this breaker. And if I connect my solar 30 amp breaker up there, uh, nothing's gonna happen yet because it's still outside. I don't have that one turned on. Uh, let's take a moment to turn that on. And you'll see, I still don't have any power down here. And the reason why is that with uh, the inverter, it has anti-islanding built in. So it's gonna take five full minutes uh, before that's going to kick on. That's a safety feature. So like if we have a blackout, for example, uh, we're not back feeding the grid while somebody's trying to fix it. So we'll come back in five minutes, see how much power we're making right now. It's two o'clock in the afternoon, but we've got some pretty heavy clouds out right now. So at 240 volts nominal, we're making a little bit less than eight amps and about 1800 watts. Our energy meter is going to just keep counting up and that is resettable with a little button over here. So I could see how much energy I'm making over um, a day, a week, a month, however often I, I wanna reset that. But overall, looking pretty good. So with that little display installed, it's great. Now I can just take a glance at it and know exactly how much power I'm, I'm making with my solar panels at any one time. Uh, I don't have to look at a computer. I don't have to go to my smartphone and log in with a username or password. I can just look and it tells me, which is great. But I do wanna leave you with just one last thought. Um, basically, that is a dumb device. It's just a simple little display, which is great. It's cheap, it's simple. But wouldn't it be cool if we could instead pull some of that data out and use it somehow. And actually, I already started playing around with that. Um, a little while back, I took an Arduino and I was able to hook it up with a certain current sensor and actually make it um, display uh, how much power the solar panels are making. But the cool thing with an Arduino is you could also control outputs. So for example, I could use it to activate a relay to turn on and off a 240 volt connection, for example. So let's say I wanted to charge my electric car, but only when it's sunny out. I could actually plug in an EVSE to a box that would be controlled by the Arduino. And when it was sunny, it would turn the EVSE on and start charging the car. And when it wasn't sunny, it would just turn off the EVSE. But even better than that, 
Uh, in an EVSE, there's a control signal that controls how fast the car can charge at. Um, using an Arduino, I could actually generate the signal that controls that, and instead of just having an on and off with the EVSE, could actually control the current that it would allow the car to pull. So imagine if, um, like right now, it's a little cloudy out, instead of turning off the EVSE, we could drop it to 10 amps or six amps, something like that, and when the sun came back out, it would go all the way back up to the full 16 amps that my car can draw. It'd be a pretty cool trick. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss when I uh, work on some of those projects in future videos. And until next time, stay charged up. Pretty overcast right now. Um, you can see a lot of clouds in the sky. We do not have a uh, full sun right now. We're making about half of our rated power. <laughs>